Good morning, lovely children. Let's continue with the lesson, The Best Christmas Present in the World. In the first part, we have seen how Michael Morpurgo finds an old roll-top desk from a junk shop. And while restoring it, he finds a black tin box from the secret drawer, which was addressed to Mrs. MacPherson, written by Jim on December 26, 1914, and was received by Mrs. MacPherson on January 25, 1915. So let's continue with the second part of the chapter. Part 2 Dearest Connie, so this says the name of the person to whom it is written is Connie. And Connie is wife of Jim Macpherson. That's why it was mentioned Mrs. Jim Macpherson. But her name is Connie. I write to you in a much happier frame of mind because something wonderful has just happened that I must tell you about at once. We were all standing too in our trenches yesterday morning, Christmas morning. It was crisp and quiet all about. As beautiful a morning as I have ever seen. As cold and frosty as a Christmas morning should be. Here, frame of mind means a particular mood that influences one's attitude or behavior. Standing to means taking up positions for something. Trenches, long deep ditches in the ground where soldiers hide from the enemy. Here I have shown the picture of trenches. These are the trenches where soldiers hide and they attack the enemies. Crisp, fresh, cool and invigorating. Frosty about the weather that is very cold with frost forming on surfaces. So the letter begins with an informal and friendly salutation to someone named Connie. So Connie is wife of Jim. Jim reveals that he is writing in a very happy mood and he is about to share the details of something great that he had experienced. He tells her about the day when all of them, that is the army, were in their positions in trenches the day before. And that day was Christmas day. The weather was cool and noiseless, which made the morning, as he described in his letter, one of the beautiful mornings he had ever experienced. There was frost all around just like it should be on a Christmas morning. I should like to be able to tell you that we began it. But the truth, I am ashamed to say, is that Fritz began it. First someone saw a white flag waving from the trenches opposite. Then they were calling out to us from across no man's land. Happy Christmas, Tommy. Happy Christmas. When we had got over the surprise, some of us shouted back, Same to you, Fritz. Same to you. I thought that would be that. We all did. But then suddenly, one of them was up there in his grey great coat and waving a white flag. Don't shoot, lads. Someone shouted and no one did. Then there was another Fritz up on the parapet and another. Keep your heads down, I told the men. It's a trick, but it wasn't. White flags. The white flag is an internationally recognized protective sign of truce request for negotiation. No man's land means disputed ground between the front lines or trenches of two opposing armies. Fritz, it's a common name, it's a common German name, a name for a German soldier 
the same way tommy is common english name used here to refer the british soldiers parapet means it's a protective wall or earth defense along the top of a trench or other place of concealment concealment means an area to hide for troops an area to hide the troops he expresses how much he wants to tell corny that it was the german soldiers who began it began what whatever happened that particular day he conveys how he is feeling uncomfortable to reveal that it was the germans here who are referred as fritz who started it he lists the series of events of how they first waved a white flag white flag is basically waved in order to make the other party aware of the intention and to indicate to them to not shoot then he tells how they heard someone from the no man's land shout happy christmas tommy happy christmas once the british army understood what was happening they wished the germans back they also thought that that was it but only then they could see them on the no man's land wearing gray gray coats waving the white flag and shouting telling the english army not to shoot the army then shoot while one by one the germans came out jim instructed his soldiers to stay hidden as he suspected it to be some kind of trick but actually it was not a trick the fact that jim was instructing everyone shows that he was a chief or head that's why he had the authority to instruct them one of the germans was waving a bottle above his head it is christmas day tommy we have snaps we have sausage we meet you yes by this time there were dozens of them walking towards us across no man's land and not a rifle between them little private morris was the first up come on boys what are we waiting for and then there was no stopping them i was a officer i should have stopped them there and then i suppose but the truth is that it never even occurred to me i should all along their line and us i could see men walking slowly towards one another gray coats that are that is german khaki coats that is people from england meeting in the middle and i was one of them i was part of this in the middle of the war we were making peace schnapps means it's a german drink made from grain and these are the sausages one of the men germans was swaying a bottle over his head at the no man's land while shouting that it's christmas and they should celebrate he invited the british soldiers over and told them that they have their special snaps and sausages as well in no time they could see a lot of germans walking and roaming on the no man's land without their weapons the first one to get out of the trench from the english army was a little private morris next everyone followed and in the words of jim there was no stopping them jim mentions how he now feels that he should have stopped them as he was their officer but he also confesses that in that particular moment it did not even occur to him to stop them from celebrating from making peace at that moment all he he could see were the men in gray and khaki coats that is uh, army people from germany and england were walking towards each other to meet in the center of the land he mentions that even he was a part of this and how they were making peace in the midst of the war between the two nations you cannot imagine dearest conny 
my feelings as I looked into the eyes of the Fritz officer, who approached me, hand outstretched. Outstretched means extended. He extended his hand to shake hand with Jim. Hans Wolf, he said. He said that his name is Hans Wolf. Gripping my hand warmly and holding it. Gripping means holding. I'm from Dusseldorf. I play the cello in the orchestra. Happy Christmas. Cello is a musical instrument like a large violin as it is shown here in the picture. This is cello. Captain Jim Macpherson, I replied. I said my name is Captain Jim Macpherson and a happy Christmas to you too. I'm a school teacher from Dorset in the west of England. Ah, Dorset, he smiled. I know this place. I know it very well. We shared my rum ration and his excellent sausage. These are the sausage as I told you earlier. And we've talked, Connie, how we talked. He spoke almost perfect English, but it turned out that he had never set foot in Dorset, never even been to England. He had learned all he knew of England from school and from reading books in English. His favorite writer was Thomas Hardy. His favorite book, Far From the Madding Crowd. So out there in no man's land, we talked of Bathsheba and Gabriel Oak and Surgeon Troy and Dorset. He had a wife and one son, born just six months ago. As I looked about me, there was huddles of khaki and grey everywhere, all over no man's land, smoking, laughing, talking, drinking, eating. Hans Wolf and I shared what was left of your wonderful Christmas cake, Connie. He thought the marzipan was the best he had ever tasted. I agreed. We agreed about everything and he was my enemy. There never was a Christmas party like it, Connie. Ration here means... A fixed amount of commodity that is allowed to you, a quota. Bathsheba in Bible is the mother of Solomon. And it's also the character in the book Far From the Madding Crowd. Gabriel Og, Surgeon Troy, they were also the characters from the book Far From the Madding Crowd. Huddles means crowd together. And marzipan, as I've shown here, a sweet covering on the cake made from sugar, eggs and almonds. So this covering, which is made up of sugar, eggs and almonds, is called marzipan, which is basically coated over the cake. So Hans expressed delightfulness upon hearing about Dorset. He revealed that he knows the place quite well, but later on, turned out that he had never visited this place or any other in England. He knew so much about England and all from the school or school English books that he has read. So they had very good time together. They discussed about all the characters uh, of his favorite book, Far From the Madding Crowd, and they shared their drinks, all the uh, Fritz as well as uh, Tommy's were enjoying their time on the no man's land, playing, drinking, eating, laughing, sharing jokes and all. Hans Wolf and Jim, they also spent good time together and they also had the cake made by Connie. So he expresses that there never was a Christmas party like this and he was so happy narrating about all the instances. So here you can see the great coats, great coats worn by the soldiers. Then someone, I don't know who, brought out a football. 
great coats were dumped in piles to make the goal posts so goal posts were created with the help of their great coats and next thing we knew it was stormy against fritz out in the middle of no man's land hans wolf and i looked on and cheered clapping our hands and stamping our feet to keep out the cold as much as anything so hans wolf as well as jim they were not playing the game they were just the cheerleaders they were just cheering their teams they were clapping their hands and stamping their foot why to keep themselves warm it was that cold there was a moment when i noticed our breaths mingling in the air between us so they were sitting so close together and and it was very cold at that time so when they were breathing they could see their breath mingling with each other between them he saw it too and smiled jim macpherson he said after a while i think this is how we should resolve this war so they he is telling that matches are enough to resolve the problems whoever wins let him be the winner instead of shootouts so he thought according to hans wolf the war should be resolved in a peaceful way a football match no one dies in a football match no children are orphaned no wives become widows so what he said was we should resolve a war in this way playing a football match here in football match no one dies no children are orphaned and no wives becomes widow i would prefer cricket i told him but according to jim macpherson he said i would prefer cricket why because people in england are good at cricket rather than football then we tommies could be sure of winning probably we laughed at that and together we watched the game sad to say here you can see how happily these both teams are playing together though they are enemies and they are in the war field sad to say conny fritz won two goals to one so he was saying that he was sad to see that tommy's were defeated in the match fritz won by two goals to one but as hans wolf generously said our goal was wider than theirs so it wasn't quite fair but hans being generous he said that the goal posts of tommy's were wider than that of fritz that's why fritz could make more goals the time came and all too soon when the game was finished the snaps and the rum and the sausage had long since run out and we knew it was all over game was over their drinks rum sausages everything ran out of stock and they also know deep inside that their merry time that their fun time is all over i wished hans well and told him i hoped he would see his family again soon that the fighting would end and we could all go home jim gave hans his best wishes and conveyed how he hoped for things to end soon and end well so that they could all go home and reunite with their families i think that is what every soldier wants on both sides hans wolf said hans replied by saying that reuniting with their families and for things to end well is something that every soldier wants take care jim macpherson i shall never forget this moment no you he saluted and walked away from me slowly unwillingly i felt so jim bid him a goodbye and said that he will never forget this moment as well as he will never forget jim and he went slowly away very unwillingly he turned to wave just once and then became one of the hundreds of gray coated men drifting back towards their trenches so he just turned back once to wave him and then he got mixed mingled in the group of hundreds of gray coated 
men and they went back to their trenches that night back in a dugouts dugouts means it's a shelter for soldiers made by digging a hole in the ground and covering it same as trenches we heard them singing a carol and singing it quite beautifully it was still nache silent night holy night all is calm all is bright i tell you children it's such a beautiful song our boys gave them a rousing chorus of while shepherds watched we exchanged carols for a while and then we all fell silent we had a time of peace and goodwill a time i will treasure as long as i live as soon as they went back to their dugout shelters they could hear the germans singing a carol very melodiously they sang silent night then the tommy sang while shepherds watched their flocks by night just like this they exchanged carols that night and after a while they were all silent jim calls it the time of peace and goodwill and says how he will cherish it for his life dear is conny by christmas time next year this war will be nothing but a distant and terrible memory i know from all that happened today how much both armies long for peace we shall be together again soon i'm sure of it your loving jim so here giving an assurance to conny that they will reunite again the next christmas he signs off thank you we shall continue this chapter in the next video